you were talking about your fitness jersey and fitness journey and like losing weight. So I know you're doing CrossFit and CrossFit content. So how did, how did CrossFit come about for you? And you know, what made you kind of stick with it? Um, well, I'd always kind of known about CrossFit, even whenever I wasn't doing it. Um, and then whenever I decided to get back in shape or start working towards getting back in shape, um, <clears throat> my brother was telling me that he had just gotten into CrossFit and he was telling me, you know, about him and his friends doing it. You got to try it, man. It's really good. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I'd always known. I was like, dude, I mean, I know it can get your ass in shape. You know, I've seen it. I've seen it for people. <laughs> like I know, I know yeah. you stick to it and you stay committed to it. Like it'll get you in shape. Um, and so I was like, okay, you know, I, I think I will try to give this a shot. And so I started making some content around it. And then that led to me getting more involved into it, being invited to gyms, being, you know, and uh, what I found whenever I started going to those, because a, a lot about what I talk about on my platform too, is how challenging it can be to be the person that's not in good shape and then and walk into an environment where you're just yes. uncomfortable. There's a lot of in shape people. Um, even if you're not just talking about CrossFit gym specifically, but any gym, oh, yeah, definitely. you know, yeah. there's a confidence issue there. That's what a lot of people have said. Like my content helps them to get back into the gym and to get back, you know, they see me doing it and not caring about what people think and how I look and all that kind of stuff. And then, you know, maybe it'll, it'll help somebody get back into the environment. But what I found with the CrossFit environment is, and, and I'm sure you know, this is they're super loving, welcoming people, oh, yeah, and accepting absolutely. people and motivating. And then you get there and you realize like, Hey, I'm not the only one that's out of shape here. You know, I'm not the only one who's struggling with confidence issues about coming out here. I'm not. And then you form a little, a little friend group and then you kind of get more and more and more into it. And they're even the most fittest of, of people, even the most elite athletes out there in my experience have been so gracious and kind and helpful. And, uh, with with me and my journey and supporting that and I know it's like that for others so I yeah. just kind of fell in love with the with the CrossFit environment and community yeah so when I was when I was personal training we had um, always we always had people that were like overweight coming in and being like you know I'm really nervous you know mm -hmm. and I'm like hey like don't worry about it all these people in here are trying to do something and they're not really con they're, they're not concentrating on you so mm -hmm. just focus on you, you know, you're definitely, you know, if you stick with me, you're definitely get, going to get people saying like, Hey, you're doing great. I see you working really hard. And that's, that's what they got. Like I would literally have people that come from the gym that are on the working out at the same time, walk up to my clients and saying, Hey, I see that you're doing, you're doing a great job. You're looking great. Keep it up. And so, yeah, and it's great. It's like, everyone's so worried about other people. They just, just focus on what they need to do at hands and not worry about anybody else because they don't, because uh, yeah. they don't care. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And it's hard. It's hard to get to that place. I, I get that a lot with the whole people see me and they're like, man, if I just had one, I'll see that comment a lot. If I just had a little bit of this man's confidence or a little bit, you know, it's like, man, I'm not doing anything different than you're doing. It's just what I'm doing is deciding not to care <laughs> what other people think about me and, yeah. and letting that affect how I choose to live my life because for a long time it did. And I think it does for a lot of people, you know, we all can, can still get, and I still have to catch myself too, but it's easy to, to let others dictate how you feel and how you feel about yourself and how mm -hmm. you love yourself and how you do that because you have one negative experience or someone laughs at you or this or that, you know, then, then you're like, man, you know, I, I need to make some changes or I'm never going back to that gym again, or I'm never forget working out. That's not for me. Or I'm, and you don't have realized how, how big of an impact that can be on somebody's life. Yeah. You know what I course. mean? So yeah, I try to set a different example and, and show some love. It's like, can you mention like people coming up to some clients of yours that were out of shape or whatever, and they start seeing some changes and someone, someone makes a compliment like, man, you're, you're losing weight. Like that's so huge for somebody because that person working out, they probably don't see the change. You know, because mm -hmm. someone else usually sees it and notices it before you will. Yeah. Because um, we're always looking at ourselves. We're our biggest critic. We're always, you know, looking in the mirror, this and that. It's like we have to live with ourselves every day so we don't see the changes like other people do. So, you know, that's kind of a reminder for me, too. Like, be the person that's making those compliments. You know, if mm -hmm. you see someone that, you know, would benefit from that, say it. You know, don't hold it back. So, yeah, especially for guys, too, because, yeah guys don't really get compliments compared to like females or whatnot. So like even saying like, 
hey man, that was great form or like that was, that looked like a great lift. You know, that, that one little positive feedback that like, like quote that you get, like, you know, word that you gave them is would probably make their day make shit, make their whole week. Who knows? Because yeah. they don't get like, I've noticed guys don't really get compliments. Yeah. That yeah. Much, as compared to females. So like just that one little thing can be, do a lot for, for somebody. Yeah, totally. So, um, so when you got into CrossFit and you started doing CrossFit content, um, you started, you know, you started getting more and more, you know, sponsors or whatnot, are people like promoting your product. So what are, what are some of the ones that you have been involved with and what makes you want to, like, you probably get tons of emails or direct messages for sponsors saying, Hey, try my stuff. What are the ones that, that you like that make you want to stick with them? Yeah. So, you know, when, when brand deals started happening and this, this started growing, um, what I tried to do was find a way because I didn't want to take from, I didn't want my audience to only see a bunch of ads, you know, yeah. one that's the best way to kill a growing content is just shove ads in their face. You know, I wanted to provide something and I'd always was providing this comedy stuff. So when it came, but to do this full time, you got to make money at it. And the best way to make money at it. And in, in my opinion, at, at, at the influencer level is, you got to market some stuff, right? You got to have some sponsorships. So I, I found a way to incorporate products into my comedy routine. So for me, what that looks like is if a brand approaches and it's just not a good fit, it's not going to be something that a product that I'm going to use or a product that I would, it, that would make sense to go in one of my comedy routines, or I just couldn't think of a way to make it funny or whatever, then mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it because it just, it, it, it wouldn't feel right. You know, I want, I still want to, my focus is to still put out funny, good, watchable videos that if you care about the product or not, doesn't matter. You're, you're going to get some laughs out of it anyways. But I found that partnering with the right brands, you know, RX Smart Gear, Ice Barrel, Blokes is another good one. I work, you know, I work with several um, and they all fit into what I'm kind of doing, you know, the pickleball stuff or the fitness stuff. And they also, are very, you know, the, the, the ones that I've, I'm working with, they're never, it was never dependent upon my results. Right. Cause I do a lot mm -hmm. of fitness stuff and a lot of pickleball stuff. Um, it was never like, Hey, you know, love you using our product, but really wish you would kind of lose some weight now because it's making us look but you know, it's yeah. not about that. You know, they're yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a part of the journey, you know, they're just supporting and they're, you know, and, and it was, it's a break from the normal fitness content. You see, it's not some rip dude using this product and showing you how to do this perfect lift. And people are just watching it going, yeah, right, buddy. I'll never have abs like that. Or I'll never, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's so just finding the right ones that fit and then allow me to kind of do my thing with it. I love it when the conversation, it's like, Hey, we love your content. We don't want to tell you what to do at all. If you could just focus on this product or focus on this aspect of the benefits of the product and then incorporate it into your stuff. That's all we, you know, so I love that. You know, I don't want to get on there and have someone dictate what I'm doing because then I just feel like I wouldn't make something genuine. Mm -hmm. True. True. So, um, you've been, you've been bouncing around like all over the place and stuff like that. So how do you, you know, maintain your fitness and eating healthy and while like traveling to all these different places and obviously the different time zones and stuff and that kind of jack you up. So how do you manage that whole situation? That's so tough sometimes, man. That that was one of the things I struggled with for sure in the first part of this journey. Tra you know, it's traveled a lot in 2023 and I was still trying to get in shape. Now, what was nice is that a lot of the traveling I was doing was was around fitness stuff or CrossFit stuff. So you're going to mm -hmm. be kind of in some environments where they're like, hey, let's go hit this workout or hey, let's go do this, you know. But I started having real results for me and this is just me. But when I started working with blokes, um, which if you don't know, there's blokes which is men's comprehensive health joy women's wellness, which is the female side of it. It's basically like you get your blood tested. You know, you have a zoom call with a doctor. They go, go over your blood and you figure out what's going on. You see what's going on. You know, I had super low testosterone, like insanely low testosterone. Uh, I was borderline type two diabetic. I was, you know, all these issues from eating bad and being overweight and do. And so, I was scared to do it at first. I was scared to do the blood test. And yeah, then yeah. I was like, but 
you know, I know it's going to be bad. Give it to me, Doc, you know. <laughs> and he, he, get, he get, you know, we were at, but I felt so much relief after seeing and hearing the things. And it's like, hey, look, all these things are fixable, man. We, we got to fix it. Let's fix it, though. So they put me on some things to get my testosterone levels up and, and raising so that we can, you know, operate like I should be operating. Um, I got on semaglutide, which is basically like Ozempic, uh, which a lot of people are having success with. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm down, you know, like 35 pounds since October Hell yeah, man. from that. So nice. Good for you. I had to have a jump start. You know, I had to have something help me. I had to get optimized, you know, internally so that I could start seeing. And that's only sparked me living a healthier life, like starting to actually lose weight um, and getting my energy and my strength back up and all that stuff from the testosterone getting back to normal has only helped me to live a healthier life and make better decisions. Now that yeah. I'm now that I'm losing weight again and starting to look better and feel better and all these things, um, I'm starting to be more aware of what I'm putting into my body. I'm starting to be more aware that I need to prioritize working out each day. I'm starting to be, you know, it's just making me want to live a healthier lifestyle. And uh, so I had, I had to, I, I was glad that I was able to work with blokes and that they, they came alongside me and said, let's get your blood work done. Let's see what's going on. And now we do it. I think every three months you, you get your blood work done, get on a call again. They check your mm -hmm. levels. They see the progress. They see if they need to change anything. So it's been super, super helpful. Yeah. So I, I know you said you were wanting to get on a healthier path, but Mike, one, one of the questions I had was, do you think if you lose, like you get to the weight that you really want to get to, do you think that will hurt your brand? Because it was mainly like based on, you being overweight or whatnot so like and how how are you think you would would you being fitter will change that i love that question i get that question a lot um i get a lot of times people saying like if this dude gets in too good a shape he's not going to be funny anymore if this dude you know and so I, it doesn't bother me because i've been in shape a lot more than i've been out of shape in my life and a lot of people don't know that you know a lot yeah. of people don't know that i was in the military in the infantry went through special forces selection best shape of my life and i was always funny i was always the funny guy I think it'll change what the content looks like a little bit um, and how I approach the content because a lot of the stuff I do now, yeah, I take my shirt off and it's funny. I take, you know, I, I choose to do things a little bit differently to kind of emphasize, you know, but I think it's just going to, it'll be a good change for my content. It'll give me something new to do. But at the same time, a part of it's been like outside of the comedy um, fit to serve, you know, my page has a, I have a message behind it, you know, finding your purpose, living out your purpose, whatever that looks like, doesn't matter how you look physically, whatever it's, we're all built in some way to serve. What does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. um, kind of the overall quick summary of the message, but you know, I want to be able to take what I've done and, and say, Hey, look, this is how I chose to get back in shape. You know, a lot of times how, how I look physically was dependent again, like we talked about on, because I wanted to look good and, and, you know, impress other people and have friends and have a girlfriend and have all these things. Yep. It was like, it was very superficial of a reason. And it wasn't a lasting reason for me to stay in shape. Cause obviously I got out of shape for me. It's, it's a different message. Now it's like, I care about my physical health because I first did something about my mental health, which has caused me to have a new lease on life, a new look at life. Like I care about my physical health now because I want to experience life. I want to be able to do more things. I want to be able to go places. I want to have longevity in life. Yeah. And that came from fixing my mental health first, mm -hmm. you know? So that's yeah. a big part of the message. And I think ultimately it's like, I'm doing all this fitness stuff and, and pickleball stuff. And if I don't lose weight, People are going to think I'm full of shit. Most, you know, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, got to yeah, start yeah. losing some weight at some point. <laughs>